All right, boys and girls. <clears throat> Step one of buying a van. Does it run? Ooh. The old V6 are running super smooth. What's up, everybody? Casey Jones here. We're going to do the van walkthrough. So, big news in the Mary Jane experience world. Miss Strawberry Sequoia, who's in there painting right now, she's pregnant. So, we're going to have a wee one. Shout out to the can of moms out there. We're having a baby. So, what does that mean about this baby? It means we've got to sell this baby because we're having another baby which is somewhere in the womb of that lady in there. Anyway, actually the biggest reason we have to sell the van, believe it or not, is it has nowhere to put a car seat. So we actually have to sell the van because we're having a baby and we can't put a car seat in it. We could probably put just like bolt a U-bolt to the floor, but I don't know what, how people would judge us for doing that. So anyway, we just finished up all the mods on the van. We got everything done on her. I'm so sad to see her go because we're not even going to be able to use it to its full potential now that it's done and complete and good to go. But hey, you know, sometimes things life in life, sometimes things life, sometimes life things and things in life do life things. Yeah. Show you what we got going on if you're interested in purchasing this lovely custom made 2007 Dodge Sprinter 2500. So let's start with the exterior. First and foremost, yes, it is green. Yes, it is texturized. No, it is not rhino lining. It is texturized deck paint. Um, so we actually built it out here in this lovely facility um, that is an old marina. So we had a bunch of old tools and they use deck paint on a lot of stuff. So we decided to go with deck paint on the exterior of the van because it's rubberized. So it actually quiets the van down. It insulates the van, um, but also because it's texturized like this, it basically is sandpaper. So it's like having rubber sandpaper on the outside of your car. Don't worry about scratching it. You could drive it up against a tree. You could drive through branches, low hanging everything. And it'll just, it literally will scrape the tree off and it will not scratch the van. So <clears throat> outside of the van is totally rubberized and paint. The bottom half we did with truck bed liner. So again, rubberized, rubberized, all rubberized. Same with the wheels. <clears throat> all rubberized uh, truck bed paint. So you won't worry about scratching them. If you look in there, you'll notice, ooh, drilled and vented rotors. So we did new brakes and everything. Also, we did new Bilstein struts on this guy. Like every time, like if you'd go over like a little bump, it would just rock back and forth. So that's because the stock suspension that was in there was just absolute crap. We have Bilstein struts and shocks front and rear, as well as the vented and drilled discs or rotors for the brakes, right? So you actually have braking power. Um, another cool feature here, we replaced the headlights as well. Um, so speaking of things that we replaced, so when we got the van, um, it's at 111,000 miles. When we bought it, it was only at 90,000 miles. We actually have only put about 20,000 miles on it. A um, couple of cross country trips, which was really nice. And then also the build out process, which you guys saw um, on the channel as well. We, uh, we ran into some big problems when we got the van back to Colorado, it uh, wouldn't start because um, the glow plugs were shot, actually, it turns out. So I got up on a bunch of Sprinter forums. By the way, shout out to Sprinter forums because they help, like, just if you're building a van or you're doing anything van life, get up on the forums. Somebody's done it before you. They have great information out there. Anyway, so what we ended up doing is we replaced this guy. This is the glow plug control module. We replaced all six glow plugs, which are underneath the bottom there. And then it ran fine. Um, <clears throat> it was, it, it actually worked. Uh, it was great to just do that, finish it. It was, uh, running just fine. And then about middle of this summer, we ran into a big problem with the turbo. Um, it was doing what's called limp mode, which means that it wouldn't rev above 3000 RPM. 
Um, that's basically because there's a seal back there, which you can't really see, that is attached to this hose. This is the air filter and intake. This is what sucks air into the turbo. Um, that seal actually broke, so the seal just popped. Um, we also found out when we were under there, this side is where the exhaust comes out of the uh, turbo. The seal on this metal exhaust pipe, right down there, that metal one, <clears throat> was actually busted. And so we had to go through, we basically pulled the whole top half of the engine off. We cleaned everything, as you can see, it's all nice and clean now. No crazy oil residue anywhere. Um, and then, yeah, everything has been running great ever since then. We've taken it to a mechanic. It's got a clean bill of health. Uh, he basically was like, yep, you're good to go. Um, we pulled off this guy um, as well. We cleaned him. I think it's called the EPF something. I don't I can't remember. <clears throat> but uh, there's a valve in there that got stuck um, just because of basically... Um, all diesels are kind of dirty, something you have to periodically do. Nobody had done it on this van. Um, so now we've done it, so it's got another 100,000 miles to go. Um, and then that uh, particulate uh, exhaust temperature gauge, which regulates how hot or cold the engine wants to run, uh, we had to replace that as well uh, when we did all the changes. Um, so we did a lot to the engine. Uh, the engine is now clean running, runs great, runs strong accelerates quickly uh, we haven't had any problems and it really was because the guy that owned this van it's a 2007 with only a hundred thousand miles on it which is super rare because typically these work vans at you know this age have like 200 300 thousand miles on them because they're driven every single day for work the guy that owned this who we bought it from didn't do that <laughs> Um, because you want that diesel to be run every day. It's meant to be a work van. That's what diesels want. If they just sit, they kind of, uh, things get, diesels are just, they're finicky if they sit. You gotta run them every day. <clears throat> so you wanna run the diesel, run the diesel. If you buy this van, use it. Um, just take it to the grocery store every now and again. People will love it. So let's close this up. Boom, <clears throat> there's that. We did the Van Tech three bar rack system on the top. That's so we can bring our paddle boards and stuff with us when we want to do that. Um, another undercarriage modification that we did, uh, new muffler. Um, so we had to put a new muffler on this guy. There is a matching spare as well. So you'll have the same tire to toss on here. Um, if anything happens to you in the back country, God forbid, you do have a matching sp spare. Ball hitch. Uh, you do have plugins for electrical here and there. Um, and this, you can actually control the brakes from the module in the cockpit. That guy. So that's actually meant to control your brakes if you need to, um, which is linked back to that system next to the hitch. So if you wanted to, I think it's 23,000 pounds is the rating on the tow hitch on this thing, which is like, if you wanted to tow a mobile home behind your mobile home, do that. Full solar shower. This thing is pretty cool. We'll hop up here. I actually just finished installing our ladder. Actually, we're able to drill into something solid, which is nice. We used some big galvanized bolts for that. And then up top, we actually just mounted it to the solar shower itself because this is a 100 mil thick PVC. So it's got a lot to hold on to. And then that's actually bolted to the frame or the, the Vantec rails. So it's all kind of an exoskeleton for the van, which is great. So let's go check it out. All right, up top on the van, we have the two solar powers, 150 watts a piece, pumping some electricity down to the battery bank. Fantastic fan. Um, so you have a fan and you can see, just cracking a little bit. It is drizzling out here and there's no water getting into the van. So that's nice. Um, so the way the shower works is on one end, we have a faucet basically, or like a garden hose attachment. And then back here, we have a bike valve. Pull this end cap up, you fill it up with water, hit your bike pump on this guy, and then you pressurize the water. I pressurize it up to 200 PSI because it'll lose pressure pretty quickly. Um, but basically that will give you warm, pressurized water so when you're outside in the sticks and you go mountain biking or you go rock climbing and you get dusty and dirty and you come back to camp and you're about to get in bed 
and you don't want to get your bed all dirty because your wife yells at you about it, um, you can go ahead and take a warm pressurized shower using this thing. Just link a hose up to that side, pressurize this side, and then you can just hang it from the door in the front literally and just take a warm shower. It is so nice, so nice to do that when you're outside in the sticks just to take a shower is like incredible. Also these guys, um, so these are, this is a quick release on the inside and then a through axle mount. And then down there is the holder for your rear tire. So that's actually how we do mount our bikes up, which you've seen in pictures. Um, basically just prevents the bikes from getting a lot of road dirt. Cause, and it also helps with wind. Because if we put them up here, the van would be, I think it has, it's nine feet tall to that point. That's the highest point. So if we were to put a bike up here, it'd be another like three feet. We'd be 12 feet tall. We actually wouldn't be able to get under a lot of bridges. <laughs> so that's why we didn't want to put the bikes on top of the van. They go behind the van. That way they don't get any road dirt on them. They don't get hit with anything. Uh, you just have to be conscious when you're backing up. We don't have a rear uh, a backup camera on this fan. They're super easy to install. If you do end up getting this thing, go ahead and do that. I just, I don't, I don't need it personally, but that's just me. If you want it. Oh, we got a little water on the lens. Oh, while we're on the back of the van. Speaking of your hose, that's your shower hose. That will come with the van, obviously. Then also, look at all this storage, mate. You can come in here, lie down. I'm a human, stuck in storage. It's it's big enough to fit all of me back here. By this big situation, we just have a big t uh, bin that we use. We put two bins here and here. And then here, you have long storage. This is actually where we put our skis. It goes to a hatch back there that I'll show you in a minute. And then this as well uh, goes through. So another kind of long storage port for anything you have there. And then we just put like smaller stuff up here, extra clothes, gear, stuff, like camping gear. Um, so plenty of rear storage. And then also the Boss audio speakers, 300 watts a piece. Um, they used to be mounted here <laughs> and then we raised the bed. And then if you see where they close, it closed on the bed. <laughs> so that didn't work. Everything has been insulated, which you can see here. So we've got panel and spray foam insulation on literally everything. <clears throat> the entire van has been insulated head to toe. That way it stays warm in the wintertime, cold in the summer. Uh, we were able to sleep for about a week up in Aspen, Colorado in February when I did the Power of Four race. Um, shout out Anders Mavis, you're the man. And it was nice because we were staying in this mini home. Check out my crib, bro. I wish I was cool enough to do that. Welcome to the inside of my mini house crib. Ooh, ambiance at the ass, boy. Let's, where do we start? Oh, we'll start in the front. Okay, so front of the van, pretty stock from when it was a cargo van. Uh, we didn't really do anything to change the front up here at all. Just is what it is. Great storage up here. Swivel and captain's chair here on the passenger side. The driver's side doesn't really matter that much because it's behind the kitchen area here. Um, but we wanted to swivel this one so that way um, it kind of moved it out of the way. Being able to swivel this one around actually it clears up this whole area so you can actually come and sit right here and you know it's it's spacious actually like there's plenty of room. Uh, when you're sitting in this, uh, the captain's chair, um, as opposed to sitting in either of the benches. So it is, it's awesome actually, because you, you, you get like all this extra space just from moving a chair out of the way. Um, so that's pretty essential. Space is always like the number one thing <clears throat> when you're in a van. Um, so yeah, very cool swiveling chair there. Uh, also in the front is we have the two Boss Audio speakers. So we have the two in the back. And then the two up front. This is great because when you're driving, um, you can get audio, you can listen to navigation or whatever. Um, and again, uh, this speaker system that is controlled from our handy dandy power panel here 
<laughs> is independent of the car. So a lot of times when you have an audio system, uh, it doesn't turn on until you turn the car on. So that didn't work for us because we were going to use this for events and things and we wanted to be able to run the audio. So it's actually ran off the power uh, panel in the back, which is totally fine. <clears throat> you just turn it on. Um, then we have a USB, uh, no, sorry, Bluetooth. Um, what you call it? Bluetooth receiver connected underneath this bench. So this is your Bluetooth receiver down here. So if you just turn on your um, inverter, you go ahead and you hook that up, <clears throat> and then you can connect your phone with it. I will talk about what where it's all wired in. So you can see all the power cables and speaker cables here um, that are wired in. Actually, there are two more speakers so you can see here very subtle sp and then on the same board here there's actually speaker cable under there if you wanted to put two more speakers um i only had these big guys so it actually didn't work to put them in the roof um, and once we hooked up all four of them it was really loud enough where i was like i don't think i need the other two speakers but if you wanted to put two more speakers in there you could just you know drill a hole mount two little small speakers there there is enough power on the amp um, to be able to run those. Um, I didn't. You can if you want to. Anyway, back under here. So this is pretty unsightly, obviously. Um, doesn't matter. When you close that, it's all good. But when you open it up, um, the reason we did that is so you can actually access the uh, fuses that go to your solar panels. Um, just in case those pop, you want to be able to get to them uh, so you can change it. And then again, you can see insulation everywhere. All insulated. All insulated. Nice and warm in the winter. Nice and cool in the summer. We'll go over to the kitchen real quick. <clears throat> um, some nice storage here. Again, that's your other fuse for your second solar panel. Um, you will get these dishes, actually, that come with the van, uh, which is nice because they match the green enamelware. Ooh, look at that. Super cool. Uh, we also have matching utensils. That'll come with the van as well. Uh, but the kitchen area is pretty bare bones. Uh, it's just kind of very simple. We didn't want anything complex in terms of having like a water pump, hot water, all of that. Um, basically what we do, uh, just propane cooktop right there. And you got your sink. Uh, you have a little foot pump here, which you just pump that up and then you get running water, which is kind of nice. So that's super cool, super simple. Um, so here's the underside of the whole van system. So we have six gallon freshwater jug and then for the gray water which runs out from your sink and down we decided to actually just use uh window washer jugs because <clears throat> every time you fill that up you can just empty that and then fill that and then you're good to go and so what that means is that you never have to worry about these jugs getting too nasty and disgusting i've seen people trying to like clean out a gray water jug and it's just like yeah, you just have to like dump bleach in it and pour out all this brown stuff. It's disgusting. Instead, you can just recycle that jug. When you fill that up, you get a new jug, and then you're good to go. So yeah, and then we have plenty of room down here for all of our uh, cleaning supplies, things that like um, our electrical, which we will talk about next. So <clears throat> underneath this bench, great storage for like first aid kit, shoes. Uh, there's a fire extinguisher under there somewhere. Safety third. This is what all of our electrical looks like. Uh, so we have, first and foremost, let's start with the batteries. We have two 250 amp hour AGM batteries. And that wire from the front that you see over there runs back to here. Boom. That is your alternator wire. Um, so while you're driving, this unit, the SeaTech D250SA, will actually help regulate between your solar panel power and your alternator power in order for it to charge the batteries accordingly. Also, the alternator cable is on this guy, which is just a ignition protection switch. Um, also, just uh, a breaker, so in case that pops for some reason, there's a surge from the alternator. You won't fry anything in here, nothing will light on fire. Uh, we have a 2000 watt constant. 4,000 watt surge power DC to AC power inverter. And that's just to get <clears throat> all your 12 volt plugs. So we have a uh, power strip here. 
Also a power strip up here as well, so that's nice and convenient if you're working at the table or you're just sitting here, you can plug in your computer, USBs, charge your phone. Uh, this guy's also got um, USB chargers as well for your phone if you wanted to use that. <clears throat> Is a little crazy under here, um, just because I had to do it and then redo it and I, I had it really nice looking and then I had to redo it with all the same cables and then it just everything moved So now it doesn't look super nice, but it is wired all correctly. I had my buddy who's a um, General electrician. He's actually a solar electrician in Fort Collins, Colorado He advised me through the entire thing. So it is to spec. So if anything pops or anything goes wrong uh, You can easily access it and we made sure that, that was the case too. Uh, we also do have this you can see back here um, that's actually run, that's the shunt that goes to our battery monitor. Um, so this guy, you can see like what's going through the discharge in terms of amperage um, and then how long you have until your batteries run out. Right now, 173 hours of runtime with 68% battery life going at that voltage and that amperage. So, very cool, all the electric, that way you have Modern conveniences like this guy. Mini fridge. We actually just bought this on eBay because we thought it was super cool and super cute. Kind of fits the whole theme, you know, in here. Very light, fun, airy. Uh, we put a little latch on it so that way, you know, if you have to stop super quick uh, in the van, it doesn't come flying open and all your food comes spilling out onto the ground. Um, we actually had an electric kettle. So we just set up our electric kettle here, boil water real quick. Um, that's always convenient to make like oatmeal and stuff coffee in the morning uh, we actually have an espresso press so we had like full-blown espresso out in the woods very posh this thing is very posh this is pergo flooring so it is it is waterproof scratch resistant obviously there's going to be a couple scratches that just happen over time because um, it's a van floor but it is just a great look nice contrast with the dark and the light uh, of the cabinets um, so it does have a very modern feel in here, even though it is a van, it does feel like an awesome little tiny home. A nice copper looking stainless steel kitchen setup, goes nice with like a brass mirror that we have here. This is actually on an old boat, so we pulled that. Uh, sourced product things that we found is this too. What? Look at that. So this is actually an old teak partition that was hand carved in Bali that we found on this property. It was actually sitting in one of the old like truck containers. I guess they had shipped some stuff over and they didn't end up using it and they just put it in storage and nothing ever came of it. And so we found it and we pulled it apart and we decided to make a table out of it. So we just put some plexi on top of this and you can pull it out, swing that leg down just like that. And then boom, got yourself a table, right? So that's great. Um, it's just another cool look. I mean, it's got so much cool intricate detail in it when you look at it, all hand carved. Um, and because it's, all, it's basically hollow, again, it doesn't feel like having a massive table in this space. It kind of gives it a little airiness and openness to it. We've got this little bugger. So you just hit the two tabs and then you pull it out. And that's actually our second bench. So we used to have a full bench like this guy. We used to have over here but it just again it takes up so much space so we tried to come up with a solution here we actually found these sliders that uh support about 500 pounds a piece so you can go ahead and just sit on this thing right like that not touching anything just sitting on air man so <laughs> it's great because you're basically just sitting on air you can sit here do your you know eating or typing or whatever or just look out at the sights. Um, so that's really cool. You can just slide that thing away and it's gone. Um, so hold on one second. Let me put the table away and we'll talk about cabinets. Very important thing to have in van, storage. So we've got this guy pull down super deep all the way back. It's longer than my arm. So it's like three foot plus of storage back there, if not more, closer to four feet maybe. Um, this is where we put all of our kitchen stuff just to make it easy to access uh, We've got this guy same thing for clothes which are in there. Oops uh, This guy which is kind of fun pull that off again for clothes um, 
I stored all of my clothing and worldly possessions in just those two cabinets. Um, and then we have these guys too. Again, nice for clothes, blankets, extra stuff there. Um, they all have these locking clips too, so that they don't swing open or whatever. So that's actually rear storage goes all the way out to the back doors. So if you have something long like skis or two by fours or anything like that, you can actually just go ahead and stick it in here. Just open this guy up. And I mean, your ski tips will hang out, but it's not a big deal, but your skis will be inside. And again, because it's all waterproof flooring and everything. So if it gets wet or whatever, it doesn't matter. You could hose it down if you wanted to. Um, so yeah, that's kind of our storage situation we got going on. I guess last but not least is the bed. Queen memory foam mattress. Um, I don't know if we can even, yeah. So it's like a six inch mattress down there, which is super nice. Um, we did custom cut the mattress to fit the back edge of the van. Uh, so it's a short queen for sure. Um, but it's nice because we can actually lay lengthwise in the van. Little tight here, not gonna lie. You can't necessarily sit up in bed fully, but you can definitely like sit up and read a book in the back of the bed. We kind of wanted to have a solid bed. I know there's a lot of modular beds out there where people have cut cushions and they break it all up and, and then it flips up, flips down, and it's super cool. It's like the Swiss Army knife of beds. Um, we just didn't want that because sometimes you get caught in those cracks and it's really fucking annoying. Um, so we just decided to go whole, full queen mattress because it's just that much more comfortable. Again, this is all about convenience. We had planned to live in this thing all of 2020. Thanks, Corona! And that's what this was designed for, was really to live in um, and be very comfortable the entire time. So that's why we went with the full, whole mattress, um, which is super comfortable. You know, me, my wife, and our dog sleep in there, no problem. And it's, like, really it's one of the most amazing experiences to be on a memory foam queen mattress in the middle of, you know, Paradise Valley, Montana, with absolutely nobody around you. Um, it's fucking cool. So that's why we did this. Uh, last but not least, I guess, the fantastic fan. So you can just open it up. Again, it's all DC powered, so you can use that. It can push air in or out, so you can change the direction of the fan if you wanted to, which is nice. Uh, we put it right above the kitchen because this is where we're cooking, um, which is why we have the backsplash and everything, so nothing gets too dirty. Um, if anything was to happen, if we were to have smoke or burn something, this would be able to suck all that air right out. Um, so you could de-smoke the van in like, like lickety split. All you have to do is just crack some windows and, and get that guy going and you get some airflow through the van, which is awesome. Um, so yeah, that's it. 2007 Dodge Sprinter 2500 on sale. Almost feels like a beach cabin in a way. Oh, before I forget. You do have two zone lighting here. So you've got your front lights on one switch and then your back lights on another switch. So that's kind of fun. These are little just insert LEDs that we put in the ceiling, uh, all run off DC power. So yeah, that's kind of fun. So anyway, again, thanks for, for watching the van walk through. Again, we're super sad that we have to sell it, but hey, coronavirus happened, life change. It's what, what it is. You know, sometimes life and things, they just change. But uh, if you have any questions, hit us up in the comments below, or you can just hit us directly through the channel. Um, it's for sale on eBay, as well as Craigslist and a bunch of cities around America. I will deliver this anywhere in the lower 48, even in Mexico. If you're in Mexico and you want to buy this van, let me know. I'll come deliver it to you. Um, and we'll just logistically figure out that nightmare. But 2007 Dodge Sprinter 2500, basically the most awesome tiny home ever. Um, yeah, hit us up. If you get this thing, take it around the world, have some adventures. It is an awesome little van. Uh, again, it's sad to see it go, but we just got to do something different now that we're having a little family, so not a big deal. Anyway, ask us questions. Peace out. Talk to you soon.